So it's about 6.05. Um, we're going to get started. I'm sure that you don't want to be here any longer than you need to be. Um, I don't want to keep anyone, um, but certainly if you have questions after the presentation, um, we'll stay as long as um, we need to. Um, this is the public informational meeting for the proposed Midshore 3 Municipal Landfill in Queen Anne's County. Um, if you're here for another reason, you're in the wrong room. Um, again, my name is Andrew Grenzer. I'm Chief of the Solid Waste Operations Division at the Maryland Department of the Environment, Land and Materials Administration, Solid Waste Program. Uh, today is October 4th, 2023. And again, this is the public informational meeting. Uh, good evening. Um, Again, my name is Andrew Grenzer. I'm Chief of the Maryland Department of the Environment Solid Waste Operations Division. I will be the moderator for tonight's activities. We're here tonight to provide you with information concerning the proposed Midshore 3 Municipal Landfill, which will be located on Harper Road, Centerville, Maryland. With me tonight is Ms. Allison Morong, the department's project manager who is assigned to review this application, and Mr. Samuel Ogbogu, head of the department's construction and maintenance section. Also present tonight are representatives for the Maryland Environmental Service, MES, MES, the Maryland Environmental Service, the owner and operator of the rubble landfill, or sorry, of the municipal landfill, and their consultant, Geosyntec. Uh, thank you for attending this meeting tonight. Uh, the Maryland Environmental Service submitted the application for the proposed landfill to the Maryland Department of the Environment in June 2022. After completing its review of the various technical reports submitted by the applicant in support of their application, MD has scheduled tonight's informational meeting to acquaint you with the proposal and to give you an opportunity to ask questions about the application or about the permitting process for such applications. This is an informational meeting only. A formal public hearing on the application will be scheduled and occur at a later date once further submissions to MDE have been reviewed and approved and prior to MDE issuing a permit for the expansion for the municipal landfill. The applicant does not have, oh, sorry, the applicant does have their consultant present here tonight who will design the facility. So this informational meeting is your opportunity to ask questions about the proposed landfill. Please make sure you have signed it at the entrance table so that you can keep a record of tonight's proceedings. If anyone is interested in being notified of any future decisions or of the public hearing regarding this permit, please make sure your name and address are indicated clearly on the sign-in sheet. There are also a couple of fact sheets available on the entrance table for your information. Now here's how we will proceed with tonight's proceedings. First, I'll describe the permit process that the applicant is required to follow in pursuing a refuse disposal permit for the proposed landfill. Then, MES or their consultant, Geosyntec, which it'll be um, Geosyntec, will describe to you what it is they are actually proposing to do. Following that, we will take your questions and we will answer as best we can. Again, the purpose of the informational meeting is to give you information concerning the landfill proposed by MES and to address your questions, not to take statements for the record. Uh, that'll happen at the public hearing, which will happen at a later date. Um, are there any questions concerning the procedures? Now I'll briefly describe MD's administrative process in this matter. In this case, we're discussing the proposed construction and operation of the Midshore 3 Municipal Landfill located in Harpers Road in Centerville, Maryland. MES has applied for a new refuse disposal permit that would allow the construction and operation of the landfill. This will be described in more detail by the applicant in a few minutes. We are here tonight pursuant to the requirements of various sections of the environmental article, which require in part that before we can issue a permit for a new landfill, or an expansion to an existing landfill that we need to provide the public information about the application and then later to seek public comment about the proposal. So to help you understand what is just what is required for the landfill permit application, I'm going to run through them quickly. Our permit process consists of five of a five phase process that is outlined on the fact sheets on one of the fact sheets available tonight. Uh, phase one consists of preliminary information to see if there are any major problems with the site that would render it unsuitable for proposed activity. Available information is gathered and reviewed to see if there are any major readily identifiable issues such as endangered species, wetlands, floodplains, scenic rivers, critical areas, historical sites, or proximity to airports. The application is sent to the county government and other agencies, and the application is held at the phase one stage until the county affirms that the project has all necessary zoning and land use approvals and it is in conformance with the county's 10-year solid waste master plan. 
A public information meeting is scheduled and held to inform the local community of the application. This is the point we are at at this time. Representatives of MDE and the applicant are present to provide information about the application process and the proposed activity. Comments received from our, from our other agencies help MDE decide whether to proceed with the application process, and if so, what other state, federal, or local permits or approvals may be, requi may be required. Moving forward, the applicant will submit a phase two and phase three reports. Phase two is the geological and hydrogeological investigation of the site. A site-specific environmental investigation of the property is done based on boring wells installed across the site. The report must be prepared by a geologist or geotechnical engineer acceptable to MDE and must describe the soils, geology, meteorology, and or hydro hydrology of the proposed site. This report is principally reviewed by MDE, but is also distributed to other agencies, including the U.S. and Maryland Geological Surveys, the Maryland Department of Natural Resources, Queen Anne's County Health Department, and the Army Corps of Engineers. The Phase 3 report is an engineering report for the facility. It consists of detailed plans, operation, operating manuals, contingency plans, and monitoring plans. These plans describe the nature and function of the pollution control systems, how the landfill will be built and operated, how it will be monitored, the types of equipment and personnel to be used, what the initial and final elevations will be, a conceptual plan for closure and post-closure use of the facility, and contingency plans for dealing with operational problems that sometimes occur at landfills, like a fire or an equipment breakdown in order to prevent impact to the environment or the community. This report is principally reviewed by MDE, but it is again also distributed to other interested agencies. Before final approval, the engineering drawings must be signed and sealed by a registered professional engineer and include a sediment and erosion control plan approved by the local soil conservation district or other appropriate agency. Plans may go through several, several revisions before final approval. The fourth phase is the internal review and preparation phase. When the technical requirements have been satisfied, MDE makes a final check of the application for completeness and satisfaction of all the laws and regulatory requirements. Within 60 days of the completion of the phase three, the department makes a tentative determination whether to issue the permit or not, and a notice of tentative determination to issue or deny the permit is advertised. If the applicant is deficient or there is good cause for denial, the applicant is notified and given an opportunity for appeal. If the application is acceptable, the MDE project manager then prepares the draft permit and public notices, copies of the draft permit and application documents, all of the reports submitted for phase one, two, and three are placed in a local repos repository, with, which will be the Centerville Library <coughs> uh, for the proposed landfill site. A public hearing is scheduled and advertised as required by law. Phase five of our permit process is the public comment phase. A formal public hearing is scheduled and held to, obtain, held to obtain comment from the local community concerning the application. It is generally held on a weeknight at a location near the proposed landfill site and is advertised by mailings to owners of property within a thousand feet of the proposed site and the elected legislative representatives for the area, as well as by publication to notices to a local newspaper at least once a week for two weeks prior to the public hearing. The public record is generally left open for 30 days during which time the hearing takes place so that interested individuals can submit additional written testimony or evidence for consideration to the department. The last part of our permitting process is the final determination. After the hearing, the hearing officer reviews the testimony and evidence presented and the applicable, and the applicable laws and regulatory requirements and makes recommendations for a final determination by the agency. This determination may be to issue the permit as is, to issue the permit with changes to address concerns raised during the hearing or to deny the permit among other possible outcomes. The final determination may be appealed by the applicant or parties who have legal standing and who are aggrieved by the decision. Such appeals are handled in accordance with Maryland's rules for administrative appeals of environmental permits, which are described in Title I, Subtitle VI of the, of the environmental article. What I've just described is our full permitting process uh, for the proposed landfill application. Um, currently, we are at the end of the phase one of that permitting process, which is the 
informational, public informational meeting. Uh, I'd like to call it this time to call upon Geosyntech, Geosyntech to describe how they're proposing to construct and operate the landfill. This is Ms. Carrie Pendleton. Hi. Um, I'm Carrie Pendleton with Geosyntech Consultants. Um, I am a registered professional engineer in the state of Maryland. Um, I know that was mentioned a few times in, in Andrew's talk. Um, so tonight I'm just going to talk a little bit about the application, what we've done so far, and some details on how landfills are designed and how specifically this landfill um, will be designed to protect the environment. Um, so just a little bit of background on the Mitchore Solid Waste Agreement history. Um, so we're here in, in Queen Anne's County. Um, the reason we're here is because Queen Anne's County, along with Caroline and Talbot, entered into an agreement among each other and with MES to operate landfills on behalf of the counties. Um, originally, it was just those three counties. In 1992, Kent County also joined the agreement. So it's now a four-county agreement um, where MES is responsible for permitting, constructing, operating, and closing um, one landfill over in each county, um, each for 20 years. Um, so I, I kind of already talked about this. The framework is um, for each county to host for that 20 year period. Talbot County already hosted Mitchell one from 1991 to 2010. Caroline County is currently hosting Mitchell two. That's where um, MES currently operates that landfill in Caroline County. That's that's planned for um, to cease um, waste acceptance at the end of 2030, at which time Queen Anne's County would then be hosting Mitchell three and MES would be operating that landfill from 2031 until 2050. And then subsequent to that, Kent County would then host um, the fourth landfill in the agreement. Um, the current site, which we'll talk about tonight, um, was identified by Queen Anne's County in 1993. Um, the location of the site is um, to the northeast of Centerville. Um, you can see it on these maps here, um, and then a, a little bit of a zoom in of the specific site. Um, you may recognize that as being behind the closed Centerville landfill, as well as where there is a drop-off center and the Queen Anne's County Recycling Center. And this property is currently owned by Queen Anne's County and has been for a number of years. Um, so as Andrew mentioned, the permit application is for a municipal solid waste facility. So um, the typical types of waste that would be accepted, the most common one is going to be household trash. Um, so it's going to be, you know, white bag trash um, from folks' houses, from your kitchens, bathrooms. Um, it will accept solid waste from businesses, stores, and offices. will also accept bulky waste, so it may get appliances, um, land clearing debris, and yard waste and then construction and demolition waste potentially from renovations, things like that. Um, not all waste that's received at the facility will be landfilled. Um, so MES may accept waste. A very good example is land clearing debris and yard waste. Um, that would commonly be processed, um, potentially making mulch, um, but some of the other wastes will also be diverted from the landfill um, and recycled. Um, so this is, um, the the site it's the same same orientation as on the previous um, two slides ago the total site area is 124 acres the current conceptual design for the landfill which is really the only stage we're at right now is 62 acres of that would be designated for the actual landfill um, the disposal capacity provided by that is approximately 8.1 million cubic yards which based on preliminary calculations what we know at this time about waste disposal, expected waste disposal during the time period this landfill would be open um, is sufficient to satisfy that 20 year period. Um, so as I mentioned previously, the, the, the primary purpose what we do in our engineering design is environmental protection. Um, so landfills are designed and operated to control um, leakage of leachate. So leachate being the liquid that flows down through the waste. Um, we don't want that to leak to soil, to groundwater, to surface water. Migration of gas, so gas that's produced from decomposition of waste. Um, we don't want that to migrate into the subsurface, nor do we want that gas to be um, emitted to the atmosphere uncontrolled. Um, so leachate is controlled by the liner system um, that would be installed in the landfill, and I'll show that a little bit later, as well as the leachate collection system. Again, I'll also talk about that. 
gas being controlled also by that liner system and by a gas management system. And then the cover system, which will go on the landfill when it's closed, um, will minimize leachate generation and gas emissions. Um, there's also some intermediate types of cover that I'll mention that um, are required to be placed throughout throughout operation of the landfill that will also help to minimize leachate generation and gas emissions. Um, so just a little bit here on just operation, general operation of a landfill. Um, so this first arrow, there's a truck there that's sitting on a scale. Um, so when trucks come into the facility, leave the facility, they're weighed, um, tonnage is calculated and, and um, you know, a, a resident or a commercial hauler is charged based on how much they dispose. Um, then they'll haul their truck to what's called the working face of the landfill. So that's where um, MES has their equipment. You can see a couple bulldozers sitting there um, and they'll dump the waste there at the working face and then it's managed by the equipment. Here we're showing lifts of waste. So um, a lift is going to be 8 to 12 feet um, and in between there's layers of soil and I'll show that again on another slide. At the bottom here, we have the liner system. I'll show more detail on that later. We have the leachate collection system, so a series of pipes at the bottom of the landfill that will collect the liquid, um, and it will flow by gravity or by pumping or both um, to a, you can see on the left side there, um, in this case, there's a tank and a leachate pond. Um, at this facility, it would only be a tank, so an enclosed tank um, where leachate would be stored um, until it's pumped into. You can see there's a tanker truck sitting there um, into a truck to be hauled for disposal. Um, and then lastly, the red pipes is showing a gas collection system where those decomposition gases would be pulled out of the landfill and then flared or potentially, um, depending on economic viability, used to um, generate electricity. And then lastly, um, environmental protection, or not protection so much as environmental monitoring. So there will be a series of groundwater wells and gas migration wells surrounding the landfill to monitor for um, any contaminants. So if there was a leak from the landfill, that would be detected by one of the monitoring wells, and then um, MES would be required to implement some corrective action. Um, so as I mentioned, I would talk about the liner system in a little bit more detail. So groundwater um, is one of the primary things we want to protect. Um, we're required to have a minimum one and a half foot separation distance from the maximum groundwater level that's, that's measured for a minimum of 12 months prior to construction. Um, so that's to the bottom of the liner system. The liner system then consists of two feet of compacted clay. And then in this case, um, the liner system that would be built for Midshore 3 and has been built for the other two Midshore facilities is actually more protective than what's required by regulation. Um, on the bottom right above the clay, a very thick plastic layer, um, then a geocomposite, the purpose of which is to collect any liquid that may leak through that primary geomembrane, so another um, thick plastic layer. And then there'll be another geocomposite to help with the drainage of leachate. So that can then be directed to pipes. We have a one foot sand layer to protect that liner system. So if there was anything in the waste um, that might damage that liner system, um, that sand layer would help with that protection. And then waste goes on top. Um, the first lift of waste is required to be what they call soft trash. Um, so no, for example, construction and demolition debris can be accepted in that first lift. This would really just be household waste um, so that um, to, again, help protect the liner system. Um, and then this is just showing where leachate would flow through the waste um, along the liner system and into a leachate drainage pipe. Um, so just to kind of compare, the standard liner system that's required in Maryland is a single plastic liner or a single geomembrane liner and two feet of compacted clay. Um, so this one actually has two geomembranes or two plastic liners. Uh, this is just a picture of, um, this is actually a cell at Mitchell 2 under construction to just give you an idea of what, what this might look like. Um, to the far right is our top geomembrane layer. And then in the kind of in the distance and also to the left that geocomposite drainage layer so that's the um, the layer right on top of that top geomembrane 
in the foreground is the sand layer that's going in on top of that geocomposite. And then to the left, you can see we're calling out one of the leachate drainage pipes um, that's being constructed. So this gives a, a good idea of the different phases of construction of the liner system. Uh, and then just to give a little bit more information on the leachate management system, as I've mentioned a few times, there will be leachate collection pipes in the bottom of the landfill. Um, in this case, the um, landfill drained by gravity out of the out of the landfill into a collection manhole, and then drain into a collection sump, and ultimately be pumped into a leachate storage tank. Um, and as I mentioned previously, that will it will be stored in that tank until it's um, pumped into a tanker and, and trucked off site for disposal. So, and I mentioned previously about final cover, minimizing leachate and minimizing nuisances. There's also some ways that through operations, um, MES will also try to minimize leachate and nuisances. One of those is daily cover. So what is being shown here is a tarp. Um, it's a specially designed tarp specific for landfills, um, fire retardant. Um, so MES can use one of these tarps at the end of every day to cover the working face of the landfill, or they could also use soil. Um, so those are two options that they have um, to, to cover the landfill at the end of each working day. And then in addition to that daily cover, there's also a requirement for what's called intermediate cover. So at the end of every week, every work week, um, and at the end of each lift of waste, um, they're required to place a one foot soil layer. So in this case, um, a tarp is not um, allowable for intermediate cover, only soil, um, and that soil stays in place as the next lift of waste is then put on top. Or, for example, in this case, you can see there's grass shown there. So when they reach a, a location where they're not going to place more waste soon, or maybe they've reached um, on, a, on an outside slope, they've reached the final grade there, um, that soil will stay and then, and then they'll plant grass um, to minimize erosion. And as you can see here, then um, the water that's on top of that can run off and be collected as stormwater instead of percolating through and producing leachate. Um, but as we show, of course, there'll be some that will go through the soil and into the waste. And again, that would get collected as leachate. And then the final cover system. So when the landfill is done being filled, um, there's a final cover system that would be put on. So on top of the waste, um, two, total feet, two feet total of a soil layer would be placed on top of the waste. Then a geomembrane. So this is another plastic, um, very very similar to what's placed for the bottom liner system. Drainage layer, in this case, helping for drainage of stormwater, um, as opposed to the ones that are used for leachate drainage. 18 inches of soil, six inches of topsoil, and then, um, again, growing grass on top of the landfill. Um, so stormwater can run off the top. Um, if it does go down, percolate down through that soil, it will get into that geocomposite drainage layer. These are very high flow plastic layers. Um, don't think um, tarp, think um, specifically designed for drainage. And again, that can flow out and be collected as stormwater. And then lastly, we mentioned that we want to control gas. So we want to prevent that from migrating through the subsurface from being uncontrolled, um, emitting into the atmosphere. Um, and we do that for a number of reasons that are listed here. So these are just some pictures of the various components of a gas extraction system um, that would be installed at the landfill um, to control gas. And then lastly, environmental monitoring. So I did mention um, there would be an environmental monitoring network. So that will consist of groundwater wells um, surrounding the landfill to um, detect leaks. Um, so if there is leakage from the landfill into the environment, um, it would eventually reach one of those wells um, and be detected. Gas migration. So again, if we, we had gas leaking out of the landfill. Surface water monitoring, there is a creek that runs adjacent to the landfill, so um, there would be a surface water monitoring point. And all of these things are monitored on a regular schedule, and then those reports are submitted to MDE um, for their review. And lastly, just to kind of give an idea of the calculations that are required to, um, to support an application like this. And that would be, these would be during the phase three process. So to kind of match what Andrew's talking about, all the environmental monitoring network is established during the phase two process. 
um, the phase three is where the engineering design comes in. And so that's where we use all the information that we collect during the phase two process about the soils um, and the subsurface and do calculations um, to support environmental um, protection. Um, and so the stack of, of books you see there is actually the reports from the Midshore 2 site, um, because of course none of this has yet been done for um, Midshore 3. Um, lastly, as I've mentioned a few times, um, you know, the intent of all the various phases of this process is to, to design a state-of-the-art facility that's protective of the environment. Um, and I think as, as Andrew mentioned, this phase one report is available to review at the Centerville Library, um, also on MDE's website, I believe. Yes? Yes. Okay. And, um, oh, and future reports will also be um, at those same locations. So at the time when the phase two report um, is, is submitted, that will also be available um, and the phase three report at those locations for review as well. And that's it. Thank you, Ms. Pendleton. Um, we'll now take questions from the audience, uh, questions about what they want to do or how they want to do it. They can be directed to uh, carry um, questions about regarding the permit process or what laws or regulations are required or directed MDE uh, can be directed to myself. Um, I will ask since we're recording the meeting and to so we capture everyone's questions. Um, if you do have a question, if you raise your hand, if you could come up to the podium and use the microphone so that we get a clear um, we can hear you clearly and they can hear you on the audio for the uh, recording. Um, so if anyone has a question, gentlemen, the first row. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Keith Palmer. I live near the, near the proposed site. I wonder if you could define exactly what you mean by water treatment plant sludge and talk about asbestos dump. In the, I mean, this says it here, you're going to dump water treatment sludge, asbestos, and <clears throat> commercial solid waste and waste from businesses. Could you please define that a bit more? I'll let someone from MES take that question, I think. Especially the sludge piece. Okay. So Tim, do you want to? I'm, I'm Tim Ford. I'm the managing director uh, for environmental operations for Maryland Environmental Service. So the types of special waste that you're referring to, um, Something a little bit more common would be wastewater sludge. Uh, we don't get a large amount of wastewater sludge, but it's, it's first off, has to be generated within the four counties. All of the waste that we accept can only be generated in the four counties unless the counties on the whole, meaning all four counties would agree. Um, there's only very few exceptions where that's ever been, been taken, but um, it's, it's wastewater treatment plant sludge. Um, and again, we don't- about Black water. No, we're talking about treated sewage sludge. Sewage. Sewage sludge right, from a, a municipal wastewater plant. Uh, again, we get very little of that, uh, and um, there's only so much that you can take of that anyway because of the slope stability. Um, so it's limited in terms of what we bring in. Asbestos would be a special waste. Uh, it has to be buried separately as it comes in. It has to be non-friable. And again, that's very, very few instances where that we've had to accept asbestos, but it is an approved waste that we can accept. One of the other questions you had were? What is waste from business? Um, uh, commercial waste from, a, from a, for instance, uh, in this county, and these four counties are talking about a Royal Farms or a, you know, a, a department store, or grocery store, uh, regular trash that they would generate as part of their everyday operations. It's just different than residential waste that we, right. is, it's, your, it's is waste up, from your home, commercial I'm waste. I'm talking about fat, fat fryers and that kind of no. stuff. I mean, most of that would probably be. Your There's a value to that, and they they collect it's yellow grease. They collect that separately, and that goes off to make biofuels. And yeah, and things like that. But rendering plants. It, the commercial waste is just generated from a business, not from a residential home. The difference right. between commercial office building and in, in these four counties is generally office, but there's not much industry in the four counties. It's mostly businesses um, and the types of waste that a business would generate: paper, paper waste, office paper. Um, food waste, those kinds of things. Yeah, and I, I did, would just like to point out that in regards to the sewage sludge waste that we were talking about and Tim was talking about, um, you know, it is treated sewage sludge. Uh, it is tested by MDE. MDE has a, uh, an entire permitting program that 
uh, permits and tests and reviews the testing material from sewage sludge, and it would have to be approved right. for that testing okay. prior to being We can't deposited. just accept it. We have to make application to the state right. the, before we get accepted. What is the testing for? Heavy metals? Well, maybe heavy metals, but more for sewage sludge, more like fecal coliform, things like that, um, nitrogen content. Um, just make sure that it's not going to add anything to the landfill that would be um, harmful, you know, if it were released. Um, you know, sometimes sewage sludge is approved and, and it's put on farmland for vegetative crops and things. Um, so it's, you know, if it's put in the landfill, it's in a double line landfill. Um, you know, sometimes th there's sewage sludge application for, um, you know, farms on the eastern shore. Um, th that happens routinely. So, you know, the, the, the waste that we're talking about in sewage sludge waste um, is treated material from a wastewater treatment plant. Um, so, it, you know, th there is testing that goes through that that material goes through prior to it being acceptable to be um, landfilled. Gary Laseco is with us. Um, he's our local manager. Gary, do you know how much roughly we bring in a year? If you had a guess, it's, it's publicly, we have a public record. We file a report every year with the state that indicates each type of waste that we generate and uh, we bring in. It would be available on our annual time report, but off the top of my head, maybe 1,500 tons per year or something like that. It's a relatively small quantity compared to the total. We bring about 100 and 30,000 tons a year of 100, uh, up to 150,000 tons of trash. Do you burn anything at the dump? No. That's the old days. Um, uh, third row back in the checkered shirt. Come up to here and I can just. Yeah. Yes, sir. If you want me to come up to here, yes. so they can hear you on the. They're, they're recording the meeting so that we can get a clear. Recording of your question. I'm Wynn Trice on Shrewsbury Farm Road. Um, two questions. Um, first, about process. Um, if I understood it correctly from what you were describing, this project is goes way, 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 way down the path before public comment is sought. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. correct. Yes. I mean, right now, I'd say this project is, lack of a better term, in its infancy. I mean, we've only received the phase one. There's been really no uh, forward-thinking work in far as um, identifying the site for hazards at the site or engineering design of the site. Um, our regulatory process and our statutory requirements do not allow for public participation until the phase five of our... In other words, after you've made your decisions tentative determination we, we get to complain but that's about it so my second question all I'm hearing about state the kind of processes and so forth does planning and zoning in Queen Anne's County do they have to vote and sign off which would lead to does the County Commissioners of Queen Anne's County vote and sign off or is this strictly a done deal at the state level so no it certainly yes the county has to sign off and provide uh conformance with the number one the 10-year solid oh, waste whoa, plan whoa. so let me ask you to slow down all right if you're simply asking them to sign off that does it conform with state regulations it's county a, regulations can't with county regulations that's one set of questions certainly we would want a compliant project but at what stage of the investigation does the question get asked, should it be here? The, you know, this site was designated per year discussion 30 years ago. The county's changed. We've added counties into it. Traffic is going to be different. The size of it is going to be different. The current per year maps, the current mound is 100 feet which I presume is 100 feet above sea level, and the new one is 250. So you're talking about a substantially larger operation than what is, has currently been there. And that's going to have visual things from 213. It's going to have traffic. you got noise pollution. 
there's a whole variety of things that at some juncture somebody should be looking at as to whether 30 years later after the original designation is this still the right place where does that come into the analysis so when the applicants submitted their application in june 2022 uh, MGE is required prior to getting to this point to ask the county whether that application meets land use and zoning approval. So, and that zoning approval is current land use or zoning approval. And the county has responded in the affirmative that yes, it meets current land use and zoning approval. So if that land use and zoning approval from when it was cited in 1993 had changed, I, I don't know the I'm, I apologize. I don't know the exact date of the letter what we received from the county, but it was sometime after June 2022. I think it was in early uh, 2023. We received a letter of conformance from the county that said, yes, the site does meet local zoning and land use approval. OK, um, so currently it meets those things. And th that leads to the whole batch of other things you're talking about appropriate studies for to making sure that um, you know the soils are correct and so forth but you know this is adjacent to a stream right yes okay a creek creek a body of water call it a creek stream take you take your pick but you have issues now with multiple counties and each county has grown right and how much have traffic studies been made noise pollution studies been made has anybody talked about whatever odors might be coming from this facility be it from methane flaring um, or just trucking in and dumping trash so in in to your first two questions in regards to noise um, unfortunately the state level, MDE no longer has jurisdiction over noise. Who does? County, health department. Okay. Um, MDE used to have jurisdiction over it. It was removed from MDE's um, purview in uh, 2012. Um, so MDE no longer has, has jurisdiction over, over noise. Um, certainly the state level sets uh, state standards for decibel levels, um, but the county only needs to meet those state levels. Um, they can they can have higher standards if they choose right. um, but we don't have any sorry the state does not have any enforcement provision over noise um, we also have no enforcement provision over traffic um, roads is state roads um, um, or, or sorry is uh, county roads are, are by the county department of transportation or county roads um, in in the county um, and state roads would be under state roads. Um, MDE does not have any control over traffic function. Um, the, the, for odors, uh, certainly I do, or, or the solid waste program, um, you know, has enforcement provisions if there are odor issues that arise um, from the landfill operations. Um, you know, we try to minimize those by operational um, things put in, us, in operational place like a gas control system, um, we also try and put daily cover on the material. Um, you know, the, the tarp system that Carrie was describing, um, that needs approval from MDE. We don't approve it for all. Um, you know, the, the, the default daily cover material is soil, which has been proven to suppress odors, suppress um, vectors, birds, bugs, things like that getting into the waste material. Um, you know, they may apply for an exception to use a tarp um, so they don't have to use Soil, soil costs money. Um, that's one of the things of economically uh, disadvantaged to use soil instead of a tarp material. Um, soil also uses up airspace, you know, for the facility. So, you know, the tarp is much easier, or, sorry, much more economically feasible for MES to use a tarp other than soil. But if we, if they would use the tarp, they would apply for it to use the tarp. And if MD would approve the use of a tarp, you know, if we would see that there are odor issues um, associated with the use of that tarp, um, you know, we'd ask them to use soil cover instead. Um, a lot of the tarps these days, uh, Carrie was talking about the tarp. It's not a tarp, you know, you're buying at Home Depot. Um, these tarps are 
engineered tarps. A lot of them have odor suppression, you know, um, in them or as part of them uh, to reduce odors from that material. Um, I'm not going to tell you that it's not, it may not smell. You're, you're, um, uh, th thank you for all of that, but you're going down a path that's not related to my questions. Okay. I mean, the management consultant that everybody knows was the guru forever and a day, Peter Drucker, said it best when he said, it is a sin to make more efficient that which should not be done at all. So I, what really what I want to address is, since you are, will not be taking public comment until you're ready to go and put a spade in the ground, do you know if the county commissioners are planning and zoning for Queen Anne County will be having any public hearings so that we can register with them so that they can communicate to you, we've changed our mind, bad location? I do not know if they are Thank scheduling you. any hearings. I will tell you that as all of the reports that are submitted to MDE get sent to the county uh, commissioners, they review them. Uh, we receive comments from them, um, and, and in other in other applications, have received comments from but to the them best all of the my time. knowledge. They have not had a public discussion or taken public comment of this. So as far as the citizens of Queen Anne's County, certainly the citizens immediately adjacent to this thing, this came as a bolt out of the blue. So I guess I'm just wondering, when is there going to be a public hearing where people can state their piece that is something short of the eve of construction? So... I can't speak. I, I do we can't have speak any county, county. Do we have any county employees here? How, I mean, honestly. I'm the county commissioner. Oh, thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Can we have some sort? Certainly open to public hearings. I mean, uh, we, we're going to have town halls on traffic. We can have town halls on traffic, and this is something we, as commissioners, are inheriting from 1993, just like you are as presidents. And there. So I'm open to conversation. We're very transparent. I mean, it just. Uh, look, look. I, I mean, I get your concern. Believe me. No, Th this is really simple. But I'll also tell the, the room, and this just to inform you, we are working with Caroline County to extend the life of mm -hmm. the Caroline County transfer stage for another 15 to 20 years. So there's a process. Well, what? We're, we're going through the steps we have to at this time. We. Long time. So we're doing what we're supposed to do, but we're certainly open to having a hearing. And, Cedar. Um, Are you introducing yourselves, please? I'm Jack Wilson, County Commissioner for District 1. Eric Rianska. Jack Wilson, yeah. Has the county had any discussions with the town of Centerville as to the impact of this type of facility? Well, I think right now we're going to start taking these days that we're going through this first stage process. The town of Centerville just spent a lot of money on the sewer and water and roads, and surely uh, we're going to be a lot more traffic coming through Centerville to go to this site. Agreed. These are, again, these are all things that can be discussed, I think, for any uh, I think before we go through all this investigation, that that discussion should I be made for the town. So I, I, don't, I don't disagree, but I think right here tonight is more of the information of what this looks like if it was to happen. Because it, it, ultimately, whether we're here or not, it's going to happen somewhere here in the county. So a lot, you know, this is basically a lot of new information for people, myself included. Um, I'm, I'm from the old school of the dumps that burn. Um, so, um, again, seeing the process and all is certainly different than my dad's job. Um, so, this is good. This is the beginning of the conversation. At the very least, this is seven years away um, from fruition. And I can't it's, listen, I've been a commissioner now for eight and a half years, so it goes by quick. Um, but, yes, we're certainly open to have hearings. I can get those set up. Like I said, we're doing town halls and traffic. Town halls and traffic. It was decided 30 years ago. There's no question. There's no, no question about phase one. Uh, uh, there's no other let, me just, let me just interject that the county commissioners meet every two weeks, every second and fourth Tuesday. We have public comment uh, periods at every meeting before the meeting starts and at the end of the meeting. So we, we take public comment at every single meeting. Um, and in addition to that, there have been conversations and uh, public uh, discussions and hearings on our 10 year solid waste plan, which has been updated a, n a number of times. This has been our location for our 
when it's our turn to host the regional landfill, we've had that, that's a public process. Public hearings are involved with that, and our comprehensive plan, which is updated every seven to ten years. This has been part of the comprehensive plan for that same period over the 30 years that we're talking about. So those are other uh, venues that have had opportunities for public comment and public hearing venue for citizen comment on this particular uh, initiative that you know we are involved with, involved with with our neighboring counties collectively as a region. And the, the, the premise back in 1990, early 1990s, was that we did not want the eastern shore to be the dumping ground York City, right? All the dumps, the old dumps had to be closed. You couldn't burn trash there. We knew we had to have something that was going to be financially sustainable. We had to join forces. Talbot County said, we'll go first. Caroline County took their turn. They're operating their landfill now. They're 10 years in roughly, and we're 30 blind. As Commissioner Wilson mentioned, there is a proposal to potentially uh, extend that landfill life in Caroline County for another 12 to 15 years. We're going to continue that in a discussion with them. Obviously, they have citizens that live near that that may not want to see it another 12 years. So that's part of the process that we're working with Caroline. So, but we are going to be the host of the landfill at some point in time, whether it's in 2031, 2045. Cap it at, cap it at 100 feet, the way the current one is. And we'd have a different conversation. <laughs> But I submit to you, the roads won't support the last 40 years. The roads will not support this work. Even if the environmental work is done properly, everything you're doing is, is, is perfectly fine. The roads won't support it. People live in Chestertown aren't going to get the feeling of the work. I'm just saying, 213 shot. Is that really what you want to do? Thank you, County Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Trace. The road study needs to be done, and that, that, that is the end of it. We have a fact-based question, which is like John said. I think, I think it's important to get this way. Second row. You. Yes, yes. Me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hello, my name is Anna Queller. I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight and ask questions. Um, quite honestly, I'm very shocked to know that the Queen Anne's County has provided confirmation statements that this plan is in conformance with their 10-year comprehensive solid waste management plan. It is not. Table four detailing the first level screening in both their 2004 to 2014 plan as well as their 2015 to 2025 plan which mde reviews and approves states that waste new solid waste disposal facilities not sites i don't care if you bought in 1993 shall be horizontally located at a minimum of 1500 feet from the nearest home or institutional building and 2,500 feet from the nearest potable drinking well for human or animal consumption. If you look at the application, even in figure A1, dated June 2021, you can see that there are at least one house within 1,000 feet. If you take the drawing, and you make it out to 2,500 feet, which of course every home in that radius has a well that we drink from, it includes entire subdivisions, not to mention houses that are picked up back here on Burrisville Road, Harper Road, Coonbox Road, Churchill Road. It is absolutely egregious that the county has said that it conforms to the plant. It does not. Both Comar and the environmental article say that this permit application cannot move forward if it's not in compliance with the county's 10-year solid waste management plan. Furthermore, if the county says that it's been in the plan for this long, they mention it, that they've bought the site. Um, the county purchased a 124-acre farm adjacent to Centerville Drop-Off Center in order to host the third Midshore Regional Solid Waste Facility. This is in the summary of recommendations, both in the 2004 and 2015 plan. The Department of Planning and Zoning and Department of Public Works should conduct a preliminary review of the site 
and develop long range plans. Even the county hasn't conducted a preliminary review of the site. So I'm asking who at MDE confirms that the county's attestation is accurate? So we ask the county whether it conforms with the plan. But MDE is responsible. It's MDE's requirement that counties submit to MDE their 10-year plan. I can see in Queen Anne's County's 10-year plan the letter that goes back and forth between MDE and the county about, we'll approve it, but you have to make all of these changes. So you're telling me that MDE doesn't review the own, their own the county's plan that they've already submitted to you, that you've already approved, you don't look at it again? Well, it's the county's plan. And they're making the attestation that it conforms with their own plan. Correct, but MDE has to approve the county's plan. So, we, at, it's, it's we MDE. We gave approval for their plan. Okay, so you know their plan and you understand their plan, and you've signed off on their plan, but you don't go back and review their plan again when they're trying to install a solid waste management facility so, that's in violation of their plan? So your comment is something that would come up in that phase of what's the setback from when their construction drawings are, are um, developed that they would be in conformance with those provisions of the plan. Correct, so they and, they can, not, and they, they can't be. They construct the facility in it on that 124 acres that's not within 1,500 feet of it's a well. It's 2,500 for a well. There's no way. I mean, your, <laughs> so your comment will... And it just has to be one house, like not several. So I, I guess maybe, I mean, I appreciate Mr. Wilson standing up and letting us know that you're here tonight. I'm s sad to see that other commissioners also aren't here. But a, a purchasing a site in 1991, 30 years ago, and then approving and, and then creating a solid waste plan in 2004 that has these requirements that basically say it's a non-starter. If a home is within this distance or a well is in this distance, we cannot look at this site any further. Then there's other screening requirements, but these are first level screening requirements. Then you approve a subdivision in 2006 that is in those restrictions and then you want to come 20 years later to tell me that too bad so sad we had this plan in 1993 i mean it it makes no somebody i i'm actually disappointed because i thought for sure md would be protecting you know citizens of a county especially since it's mde's requirement that a county submit a plan i was like there's there's no way that mde is gonna like overlook the fact of this non-compliance, this non-conformance. I'm actually very disappointed. Ms. Qualler, I, I'm sorry you're disappointed. So we don't, I don't have a plan or a construction drawing currently that shows where the landfill or the waste footprint will be. But it's horizontally from the site, not like in the center. It's horizontally from the from the limit of waste is probably what it is. So it says from the of, site, so I don't know. So I mean, I guess we could. So the boundary. So the boundary is probably the limit of waste is how that would be interpreted. I mean, you know, we can talk about how you can interpret what the boundary means, what that language means in the in the county solid waste plan. I cannot interpret what the county meant by boundary. Okay, only the county can interpret what they meant by boundary. Um, if I was going to interpret it, it may be that it's the limit of waste. So I have yet to have a drawing or a construction plan submitted from the applicant on what that limit is waste is. What was the one you showed on the screen? This might help you. This is her map that shows the 2,500 limit. And here's the subdivision and every house and darn near to the chicken houses beyond are inside that 2,500. You showed a picture of 
It's it's the property line. It's the property line, not the boundary. It's it's a conceptual. It's a conceptual. It's a conceptual uh, plan. Layout. So I guess it's okay to put a landfill like so there's obviously these requ these county requirements came about for a reason probably cuz the county wanted to protect its citizens. So I guess we'll just protect the citizens next time and not the ones this time because 30 years ago somebody decided to purchase a piece of property and then approve a bunch of subdivisions. I don't know. I guess I guess we don't get that protection. I think he had his hand up for it. Can we get the first row for a second? Sir, you'll be next. Yeah, good evening. Uh, my name is John Schaefer. I live at 340 Shrewsbury Farm. And I believe, based on my preliminary review of Google Maps and where this proposed site is, my house, my well, is the closest to this property. So I just want to back up Ms. Quayler's assessment that the limitations laid out in the um, waste plan for the county uh, as this proposed site does not meet those limitations. My house lit is approximately 400 feet from the nearest edge of the site. Um, my well is 430 feet from that. Um, and, and the 2,500 foot boundary covers the entire site. So there's no part of that landfill that would fall beyond 2,500 feet from my well. And I know everyone else in here potentially has, has wells that fall on that as well. So I just wanna know at what point is that addressed by MDE, if ever. I think we, it would be addressed when we have a construction plan for the landfill. Okay, so why do we spend the millions of dollars to create that before sort of addressing that it meets the minimum requi requirements? Your corner is right closest to the landfill. So the sit you and, and, and the, count, the county's not spending the millions of dollars, right? The okay. citizens aren't spending the millions of dollars. I mean, uh, the MES I is. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think these are good questions. Maybe you have. Okay. Maybe Geosyntech and Maryland Environmental Service are going to look long and hard about the answers of those questions. Okay. And potentially MDE responds to the county commissioners and says. Are you sure that your conformance statement is appropriate? Okay. Um, you know, I, I did look at the 10 year solid waste plan um, when we received the application, you know, when they were in conformance. Um, the county then provided an affirmative response that they viewed that they were in conformance with it. Um, okay. From the information that's being provided here tonight, I cannot say that I am in agreement with maybe their letter of conformance. Okay. Maybe it needs to be looked at again. Maybe the county needs to look at it again. Okay. But I'm not going to say that their uh, their letter of conformance is is wrong, is incorrect. Understand. So they may view it a different way than you view it. I don't know. Okay. Okay. But I was at, I asked them to provide a letter of conformance and they did so. Okay. Um, you know, that is what's required from a regulatory standpoint from MDE to ask the municipality or county, does this applicant or does this application conform with your 10-year solid waste plan? Okay. Um, it's not a, a fact-finding mission to, you know, me to dig into county zoning laws. You know, the, I have 26 counties in Maryland in the Baltimore City. There's a lot of, <laughs> lot of zoning, intricate zoning laws sure. and regulations in each of those municipalities and counties okay i have time on my hands but that mu not that much time to be familiarized myself with all 26 counties in baltimore city's zoning nuances sure okay so i'm relying let me just on them as experts uh, in understand yeah so if if we want to relate um raise the issues that i just mentioned as well as any others then it is would be incumbent upon us to take it up directly with the county to 
uh, our county commissioners I and or the time, office. I would that, think the county commissioners is, you know, they said they meet on every Tuesday, yep. uh, Tuesday, uh, yep. second and fourth Tuesday of every month. Um, I believe that that is at this time the appropriate venue to bring up Perfect. those questions. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they said they, they make themselves available to you. Um, I absolutely. You know, we <laughs> this meeting is being recorded um, on behalf of the county. Um, I'd hold them to that statement that you know they're going to be there next Tuesday. Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time and your question or comment. In third row, sir. I'm Dale Burns. I also live within that, within that 2,500-foot uh, circle. I guess you introduced us to saying we were in the latter part of phase one. I submit that we need to go back to the first part of phase one. As a citizen of Queen Anne's County, I'm embarrassed that we sent in the report that we did, and I think the county commissioners seem open to doing that. So I think maybe we're not in the latter phase of phase one yet. We want the county to go back and, and do a better job of what we submit to you so we can uh, consider things other than just environment, consider road, uh, road cons maintenance cost, access, more preferably from a major highway rather than uh, where we are now. Also, uh, the impact on values uh, on the homes in, in the area where you have a, a facility like this, and also tax revenue. If you lower the tax revenue and you incur costs, keep the, the small roads up to feed the thing, it costs the county money. So I think the county needs to go back and just look at a more comprehensive, uh, look at the solutions for a more comprehensive uh, set of factors. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Second row. Most of my question, I'm Teresa Earhart. I live in Shrewsbury Farm subdivision. We have 24 lots and 19 houses that are built so, thus far. I just want to point out, uh, most of my questions have been answered. Your phase one report that we were able to access uh, was uh, updated, revised of February of 23. When I reviewed the application, the little box down here that says that um, the county has issued you um, a statement about conformity is not checked. So that's the original application. But this says it's updated, sir. Okay. So if it's updated, then it should have been updated. So the original application holds when they originally submitted an application. Uh, that's when the re the regulatory requirement is when they originally submitted an application. That's the it, that's the application that is on file. So, the the, the whether they they we received a letter of conformity is based upon the date that the department receives a letter of conformity, and that is noted in our file of the date when we received the letter of conformity. But the original application does not require that the applicant have the letter of conformity All right, it's a little deceiving the for the public when we're reading through this. So I, I'll make this clear. Yeah. A statutory requirement is that MDE ask the county if it's in conformance, not if the applicant asks the county if it's in conformance. So even if that application, if that applicant had checked the box, yes, we, we talked to the county and they said it's in conformance, MDE is required to ask the county. So that the checking that box is honestly a formality under the statute. MD is required to not rely on the, the, uh, the applicant checking the box, but to ask the county, MDE as an agency, ask the county itself, is the facility in conformance? So we were required after the application was submitted by statute to ask the county whether they're in conformance. So the applicant is the one who created that application and checked that box and would have checked that box. Okay. But by statute, it's not whether the applicant checks that box or not. It's whether MDE formally requests from the county whether they're in conformance. So at the time they submitted the application, they had not asked the county. But that's not an issue because the, the statute requires that MDE ask the county, not the applicant. Okay. 
And um, my only other comment is, is that Queen Anne's County um, has had waste management um, plans, uh, solid waste plans for 20 years. And I believe, Todd, your name is written on both of them at different inter uh, in different positions. So the county should have been more than amply aware that there was the 2,500 foot boundary. Okay, your name's on both of them. I just wanna point out one other thing. I, I don't really understand the whole process. You're absolutely right. I received 24 hour notice of this whole. There are six people on that list uh, that w that's in the application process that did not receive notice in our subdivision. I don't understand why data from two years ago is being used to notify people about this meeting and this situation. I actually had to call when I f discovered it and they Priority, priority mail expressed this, and I received it yesterday evening, 24 hours ago. Thank you very much. I know you had your hand up. Did we use in the second row of the sunglasses? Were you have your hand up for your? Yeah. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. <clears throat> My name's William Kyle from Shrewsbury Farm Lane. Um, the one thing that just puzzles me is I've, I lived in Virginia for a little while. We had Mount Trashmore in Virginia Beach. Right now, all these decades and decades later, it's a great big tourist site, and I wouldn't, I don't go near it. So uh, when I'm there, but the thing that's killing me here is you look at that elevation of 240 feet i don't know if you've driven across to annapolis recently but how high is that bridge anybody know yeah my car registers at at, at the peak where the car's going over not the top of the bridge 212 feet so you're going 28 feet higher than the bridge and you talk when we talk about what the eyesore that's going to be from 213 especially for that number of acreage and then you talk about the runoff everything else made me curious when you showed the slide of the pit that you start with for all that ground layers and all that other stuff how far down do you dig to start yeah that's a that's a good point. So this is actually not particularly representative for this for an eastern shore landfill. An eastern shore landfill, because of groundwater separation, would be much, much shallower. Exactly. So the elevation has to be much, much higher. And 240 feet, you wouldn't be able to see anything from any other part of the county. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Fifth row back. My name's Brian Gardini. Unfortunately, I live at 130 Harper Road. So my front door is 47 feet from the middle of Harper Road. My well is 1,000 feet from the gate that goes into the transfer station. So I think my wife and I, I'm pretty pissed. To put it bluntly, That's an yeah, and I mean, like I I go, da like not daily, but probably every three days. I take my youngest daughter, and I pick up trash oh. from my yard, from Mr. Cal Gray's property, and from Mr. Tuttle's property with a grabber. Okay, and I think you're going to put. You said six days a week you're going to run trash. Is that right? Monday through Saturday. Uh, bring the landfill. But I'm just yes, saying, I hear it's Monday now. through Saturday. That's in the application. Four yes. counties, four counties, okay, of people. We're talking about right now, right now, it's pickup trucks, trailers, no big deal. I'm the guy that waves to everybody when they come by. I'm fine. That's 
In 1993, my house wasn't there. I was working to get my house. Understood? Like if you were that if you were that close to a, to a landfill and a road with that amount of traffic going by, would you be upset? Oh yes. Thank I mean, that, that's you know what I mean. Absolutely. Put yourself in my shoes. You know, I got a 13-year-old. I got a granddaughter. I know she has granddaughters. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I just can't, I don't know. I've been in construction for 32 years, commercial construction. I don't know how this, how you got a permit. Like, with what, with what some of the people, and we're just. So you don't have a permit yet. But, okay. But what I'm saying is, how does it even get to the process? I, it took me forever to get a permit to build a house. You, you know, just a freaking house. You, I, I don't. I don't know. I'm. I'm pretty. I'm pretty PO'd at the whole thing. I and I, I, I. And I'm probably like, we're affected, honestly, more than anybody in this room. And what I'd like to see is, can't you provide the county with a map of all the property that the county owns, and you say, oh, well. You got 90 acres. Hey, we got 300 here. We can spread it out, and you only got to build it 80 feet high, 70 feet high. Not, you know what I mean? I don't, it just doesn't seem like this was very well thought out, in, in, in my opinion. We have too many parks. Pick one of them. Yeah, but, I'm, but I mean, there has to be, and I mean, here's what I don't understand. Like a lot of the people here from Shrewsbury Farm, I totally appreciate it. They're beautiful homes, gorgeous homes. They didn't know they were going to have a trash dump, you know what I mean, and shoved up their butt, basically, is what's happening. I mean, that's exactly what's happening. I mean, when I bought my property and I bought my house, I knew the transfer station was there. I knew it was existing. I didn't care. We People go by three days a week, you know what I mean? But think, think about, I don't know how, like, you could run the amount of trucks and stuff you're talking on a road the size of my street and Chip Street and the borders the Cannons property and, you know, Burrsville Road. I just don't get it. Like, I've heard one peep about this dump from the guy at the transfer station. I went to take trash back there one day and he goes, hey, did you know they were going to put a dump back there? This was like two years ago. And I was like, I had no idea. Never even thought twice about it. But what he told me was that we're, the road to the dump was going to come off of 213 eventually. But I don't know how, you know, you, you come off Burrsville, people are going to come from both directions down Burrsville, from Chestertown, if they're coming from Kent County, they're going to come down 213, they're going to cut down Coon Box, they're going to cut down, you know what I mean? They're not big roads. It's there's no shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I mean, you're, there's just there's there's no room. There's no, there's no room. I don't I don't understand. But I mean, my house in 1993 wasn't there. But I mean, I've worked hard for my house, and I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna fight for it. You, you know, and for my and for my property and for my family. I mean, it's I just think it's it's wrong. And I know there's a lot of there's a lot of like Adam Cannon and I have talked. There's a lot of eagles. There's a lot of ospreys. There's a big flock of blue herons that use all that property, deer, wild turkeys, name it. I understand that's probably countywide, but there has to be a property somewhere. Not that we're not rural, but you also don't have Shrewsbury Farm 300 yards from a dump in, in other parts of the county, if you know what I mean. There's got to be a more isolated piece of property th that could handle... I, I just don't think the infrastructure in that spot is going to work. And, I mean, I, you can tell me whatever you want, but that's just my feeling. <laughs> I appreciate your comments. MD appreciates your comments. I, I will say, you know, MD didn't pick the location, right? We're presented with the location from the applicant, you know, in the county. Um, also, in regards to the permit process, the applicant can tell you because they've gone through the permit process a number of times. And... Uh, Ms. Pendleton from Geosyntec has gone through the process for other landfills and other applicants a number of times. You know, it's a three to five or six year process. You know, it's it's and this process right now was delayed a little bit by communications between Carolyn County and the county about extending the use of Midshore 2 um, by that county or we would have had this public informational meeting uh, in the spring of 2023. So that time frame that's gone by is I don't want to say it's lost time, but it's just time that 
we were ready to proceed, but we didn't proceed because they were looking to extend the life of that Midshore 2 facility. Um, but, you know, the, the whole permit process is, it, it, you know, it's not, a, it's not a six months or a year. It's, you know, it's a three to six year period, um, you know, to do studies, to do evaluations of what's going to happen. Um, as far as the infrastructure, infrastructure um, comments, again, I, I don't have jurisdiction. MD does not have jurisdiction over the roads. Um, you know, th that, that falls under county and, and state highways. Um, so we, we certainly submit plans that we receive from applications to counties, county uh, roads, uh, Department of Public Roads, and also state highways um, for just some of those comments that you are directing to me tonight. You know, is this a feasibility issue for this location? Um, that has not happened. I mean, in, in the preliminary drawings were sent to them, you know, preliminary plans, but you've seen the phase one is very preliminary. It's very conceptual. Um, so someone at state highways or county roads may have looked at it and said, well, I really need to see how more I need to see more. I need to see what's going to actually going on before I can make a determination whether that infrastructure is capable of supporting what they're saying that it's going to support. So I think that it will get to them or, or, you know, they will have to address that at some point. They just haven't addressed it yet. Um, but I know that, again, I, I understand your concerns. Um, MD, here's your concerns. Everyone's concerns that's spoken tonight. Um, I think you've made some, there, there have been some important comments that have been brought to light to MDE. Uh, MDE will consider them. Um, I think the county will probably consider them, especially if you show up on Tuesday and present them to the county uh, directly. Um, I don't want to take up any more time because I want you, the citizens, if anyone else has additional comments to make, I want to give you the opportunity to make them, um, you know, here tonight. And, and I will stay as long as you want me to stay or MDE will stay as long as you want me to stay. I'm sure the county will as well. Um, but I, I certainly don't want to take up your time. So this is your, your podium right now, if you want to use it. How many trucks does they go into the existing Carolina County landfill? Gary has it. I, I can answer that one for you. How many trucks in the existing landfill? Uh, so the total vehicle count per day on average is about 140 vehicles. Jeez. That's predominantly the vast majority of those are, are pickup trucks from citizens who reside within the That's two counties. trucks a day. And then after that, we get about 40 roll off trucks a day. Anywhere between 15 to 20, which you would consider typical garbage trucks, front loaders, rear loaders, side loaders, etc. So, could you tell me again the total? On average, it's about 140. Is that that 140? It's inclusive of the roll-offs and garbage trucks. Yes, all, all vehicles entering the landfill. Okay. But they're going to come out. So that's 300 a day. And just in first. To put it in perspective, in 2015, at the Centerville transfer station, there were 332 vehicles per week, according to the county's plan. Um, just one more thing on roads, because it's in the same list of requirements that deem a site unacceptable for further investigation in the county's plan. So solid waste disposal facility shall have a commercial entrance and be located on a major collector slash highway or higher classification roadway. And if you, you know, it's miles from 301, I don't know, 213 is a higher classification roadway, but the site's not off of 213 either. You have to go down multiple other roads to get to it. So just wanted to point that out also. One more is does anyone else have any comments or would like to ask a question? So I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. Um, you know, MD certainly will review the comments that you've made. Um, if you have any written comments, or you want to send me comments, you can send them. 
I'll give you my email if you have it. I'm not sure. Sam, is it on any of those sheets? I think the notice that you sent it to somebody. Allison. Okay, so Tyler Abbott is my director. He's the director of Land and Materials, so he is my boss. So if you want to send them to him, I will get them. Um, yeah, um, so certainly if you have written comments, um, you can send them to him. Um, if you want anything from me or have questions, uh, my name is Andrew Grenzer. My email is a n d r e w dot Grenzer. G is in George. R e n z is in zebra. E r. Sorry. And Andrew, a n d r e w dot Grenzer. G is in George. R e n z is in zebra. E r. And that's at Maryland.gov. Maryland spelled out. So at this moment in time, um, you know, we, we have our, our we're going to conclude our public informational meeting. Uh, MDE will review comments from the public informational meeting, may reach out to the applicant or the county um, in regards to the comments that we received. At this point, we have not told the county, I'm sorry, told the applicant to proceed to phase, preparing their phase two report. Um, but at some time, if we would ask the county to um, proceed to um, submit or their phase two report, that would be available on our website. Uh, we would post that, um, that notification to the applicant to do so. Um, if we need to address further comments or think that there's a need for another public informational meeting based on what we've heard here tonight, um, potentially we may, we may do that too. Um, if you put your information uh, on the sign-in sheet, uh, hopefully you noted whether you want to be contacted about future public hearings. I will take that as if there's going to be a future public informational meeting, you'd like to be contacted as well. Um, I believe Mr. Wilson, yeah, yes. that's um, comments. So I appreciate everybody coming out. I appreciate all the comments. I've taken them in. As far as my fellow commissioners, do not hate on them for not being here. They are actually doing other meetings in the other parts of the county. I have this meeting, so I was a lucky one. Um, uh, but yeah, so um, about Tuesday night to come in, I heard what you said. I am going to relay it. Uh, it's got it'll probably go out in a bulk email to all of us tomorrow. All the comments were made. Uh, Stephanie from Planning and Zoning is going to check into some of these, um, uh, the 2,500 foot setbacks and things like that to see what that base plan does to the original footprint of the property. So that we get, if that's a non-starter, then that's a non-starter. Um, so uh, that, that's all I can offer up right now. But if you're going to come in Tuesday night, kind of just come in and be respectful of our time there. Um, like I said, I heard you loud and clear. This is the beginning of the process. I will relay it. But certainly, you're welcome to come in and make a few comments about some of your concerns about just the site in general. Um, and that's kind of where I would leave it with some of this other minutia is going to get worked out as Stephanie and, and uh, planning to staff start to review some of the comments. So, uh, I appreciate you guys being here tonight. Welcome to Tuesday night. Yeah. Where, where Tuesday? It'll be at the Liberty Building, right? We're back to Liberty. We're open again. That's the plan. We've been moving around because they've been painting the Liberty Building. So uh, we've been at the high school. We were here. So yeah, we're back to Liberty Building, 107 North Liberty Street, uh, second floor. So we start at 5.30 typically. Uh, we'll, um, public comment will be done at 5.45, uh, first one, and then we'll have one at the end of the meeting. The first public comment, so we can get through the business agenda because we have staff, um, county staff and all there. Uh, it's typically only 15 minutes, so basically five people with three minutes apiece. The, the tail end one, they can go to midnight, so you're all welcome to come in at the end of the meeting or at the beginning and take up the first 15 minutes. No. What's that? Tuesday, Tuesday yes. Yeah, five three. And, and also, uh, we are live on Queen Anne's County TV every second and fourth Tuesday, and you can Zoom, zoom us in, and you can do public comment from your house. You don't have to be there in person. We have the ability that if you zoom in on the meeting, that you can uh, start there and do public comment that way as well. So if you can't get there in person, feel free to do it that way. So, that's all right, thank you. Thank, that's great information. I mean, I appreciate you providing that, that they can be there or they can go remotely as well. Um, 
he asked you to come, I would support you in doing the same, um, you know, and, and presenting those concerns to the county as well as you did tonight to MDE. But I do thank everyone for coming. Um, if you have any other questions that you didn't feel like asking in front of uh, the full audience, um, I will certainly make myself available uh, after the meeting. And, you know, you want to come up and not be necessarily in a recorded uh, setting, um, I'll be happy to try and answer them. I'll conclude the meeting tonight with that.